Hey guys, you're watching Bob's Decline here. I've been liming on the east coast of Canada for the last 16 years now. It's been a few weeks since I posted any videos. I've been super busy. Uh, we've had a ton of break-ins in our substations again, and this time I actually caught a fella red-handed. Um, now as much as I'd like to plaster his face all over social media, that's not my place to do so. But I did want to show you something that I encountered in the field a few days later. It's just to show you how easily you can get a difference in potential between your neutral and ground wires. Take a look. The reason this light is, is out is actually the neutral wire is damaged. So you have your live wire here going up to your triplex. Your neutral wire, which is grounded to your copper ground on the pole. And that copper ground goes to the ground. People cut and steal these all the time. And here you have your nettle neutral wire. So this neutral wire, which is grounded, now that's only feeding 100 watt light bulb, nothing more. And you can see here that the arcing is actually enough that it's melting the copper. So what you were just seeing was an open circuit with a break on the neutral side. A very common and simple setup containing nothing more than a 120 volt source, a 100 watt light bulb, and a ground wire. As we and many other utilities use a multi-grounded system, whether it's the neutral or ground wire cut can result in a deadly difference in voltage as the returning current or even induced voltage no longer has a return path to ground or its source. So you happen to be touching one of these wires once they are cut, you may become the new path with deadly results. My objective isn't to help people understand which circumstances cause these hazardous conditions, but to make people realize that the danger is very real. That entering our substations, and especially touching or cutting any wires, regardless if they are just grounds, or if you think you know what they are doing, is extremely dangerous. One particular example of a wire that was cut last week serves an identical purpose as the one on the light bulb that I just showed you working, except this one is a return path for about 10,000 light bulbs, as well as anything else you might find that uses electricity, as it feeds an entire village. So you can only imagine the current traveling through this wire when it was cut. This heavy gauge copper wire was protected behind steel guards inside our locked substation compound, yet the thief felt that risking his life was well worth the 20 bucks that he'd get on the black market for the stolen copper. So I'm going to show you that clip one more time, keeping in mind the only return current is a result of one single light bulb trying to turn itself on. Now the only load on this is this little light bulb, nothing more. Now you can imagine an entire circuit, feeder, substation, transformer. Once you cut that ground wire, you interrupt the electrical path's return back to source. So right here we have this neutral wire from a light bulb going to ground. You can see it's actually drawn enough current that I'm able to melt the copper wire. Anyhow, I think you've seen enough of that tiny little bit of arc and hopefully understand the big picture. Not only do we not want to see anybody get hurt, but also, outages caused by this vandalism and costs associated with repairs are harder in our small communities. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.